I've chosen a reading in a minute, but before we have the reading, I think we ought to bow our heads in prayer. Loving Father, we just thank you that you do love us. You've revealed yourself to us in our Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you came and died on that cross, that cruel death, in order that we may be set free from our sin. So we ask your blessing upon us as we contemplate and see your word and what it says to us today. So we ask your blessing upon everyone here and that the Holy Spirit will hover over this meeting to the honour and glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Now, <clears throat> I've asked Anne, because she's an excellent reader, if she would be kind enough to read our reading this morning. So, over to you, my love. Yeah. Hear the word of the Lord according to Peter. First Peter, chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was be to be yours searched and inquired carefully, inquiring what person on time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you in the things that have now been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Therefore, preparing your mind for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, 
knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without spot, blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. Thank you, Anne. I expect you have discovered that Anne and I read different versions of the Bible, but not to worry. Um, I would like to, first of all, say that over the years, I have not appreciated the holiness of God. Why? Because, first of all, I have never had somebody tell me what holy meant or means. And I think that that is a very important issue in the church today because holiness is not being preached or taught. So I want us to look back, uh, Steve, uh, to verse 13, please. The more trouble I've caused for my son. <laughs> Not quite there yet. A bit further back. Therefore, that's right. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope hope on the grace be, be, to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. Now I uh, have been looking of late especially about that last word, those last words. Jesus Christ is revealed and the revelation of Jesus himself will finally occur when he returns to this earth. And we need to be ready for that, um, always ready. Although there are about, now I can't remember the exact number, but it's an enormous number of prophecies about the Lord's return, I think it's probably over a thousand. There are only about 20 that have not been fulfilled so far. And so therefore, we can expect not to look too far in the future um, to welcome him back into our, our world. Now, <clears throat> welcoming him back demands that we are ready for that enormous, important event, which is not being thought about in any way by our polit politicians or anything else, by the people, for instance, who are um, spending a lot of time uh, and energy 
about the problems with the climate. Although it's important that we do take care of our planet, I was looking at another verse here um, not long ago that tells me that this earth of ours is of limited time and that at the end of the age it is going to be destroyed destroyed not by water as in the flood but destroyed by fire now how does this come about? We, we watch we, with great care what is happening in Israel, for instance, because Israel is God's timepiece. And the promises of God to Israel have yet to be fulfilled completely. So we need to watch, as the Bible tells us, when we see all these things come to pass, then look up, for your redemption draws near. That redemption is not just redemption of our world or our bodies, because the world is going to be changed. And it says also that there's a new Jerusalem going to come from heaven, which is reserved for us. And some Bible teachers have said that one of the things which is likely to happen when it says it is, comes down from heaven, the new Jerusalem, ready for us, who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and regard him and his holiness as absolute. There's a lot of things I'm saying at the moment that I haven't got in my notes. But I believe that the Lord wants us to face, first of all, this matter of holiness because it says just as he who called you and have you been called by God yes if you've put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ you have just as he who called you is holy so be holy in all you do for it is written be holy because I am holy. Now, I've no found a lot of Christians who've taken that as a condemnation. But it's not a condemnation, it's a warning and also an opportunity. God is quite able to give us the strength to be holy in His sight and holy in our witness to the world. However seriously you've fallen back behind, God is able to restore you. But this holiness is not achieved by willpower, is not achieved by um, saying, well, I'm going to be holy in future. It's a different issue. And it works like this. We need to surrender our fallen will to the sovereignty of the King of Kings. And when we do that, it opens the door for all sorts of blessings to us. And particularly healing and also 
the issues of hidden sin and sin which is repeated in spite of what we want. Now I identified something wrong with my life a few a year or two ago and I went to see somebody about it. I went to L.L. Grange actually and I spent a weekend there and it was of great value to me but it didn't deal with the matter. But I learned a lot and then I got really upset with God or rather more importantly upset with myself and I implored God to deal with this matter because it, I, it was brought to my attention when I was looking at the end times and what's going to happen and who's going to inhabit this new earth. And so the Lord graciously answered my prayer and gave me victory which I've never had before. So whatever your problem is with God, with sin, God is able to deal with it, but he wants a single-minded request. No holds barred. See, it says here, now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth. We need to be obedient to God. Without being obedient to God, we are rebels. And we can be rebel Christians in certain circumstances. Sometimes because we're not taught correctly, and sometimes because we have such a stiff neck. And our stiff neck needs to be put under the bending machine of God. And Jesus will do something that we didn't expect and we are able to stand again. So, that's all my notes. I've not looked at any of those. <laughs> But I think it's very important that we look at this holiness. Holiness is the priority of the Christian life because of what I've already said. It's impossible for us to live in a loving relationship with God while we are rebels. God loves us, does not wish to bring judgment upon us, but he also requires us to be in submission to him. Now that has certain connotations for our lifestyle what we're involved in in our communities remember that God has a great love of people who are poor and so to be involved in something like that is quite important But what is this holiness? God's holiness is unique and without compare. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 2 says, There is none holy as the Lord, 
To whom will you then liken me, or shall I be equal? Saith the Holy One. That's in Isaiah 40, verse 25. <clears throat> God alone is holy. He is infinitely, unchangeably, and eternally holy. His holiness is underived. He doesn't get it from well. It's independent at, in his nature. Just as love for the world is in his nature. And because of his, of his love for the world, it says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Not only that, but he made promises to the, the children of Israel, very important promises which still stand today, and those promises are now inherited with the children of Israel by Christians because we've been taken into the same covenant and it's wonderful to see um, those people who are um, very keen on the nation of Israel and have become messianic Jews. It's wonderful to see how they love one another and how they love Christians who love them. So we need to make sure that we take note of what God has said in Romans 11. There's quite a lot about it there, 9 to 11. Romans. Because God is holy and because God is eternal, we must rely upon God's revelation of himself in the Bible to understand who he is because he is holy. Holiness is a continual theme in the Old Testament and holiness is a continual theme in the New Testament. So let us now consider what we should do to allow God his full sovereignty in our lives. One of the things that will happen is that when we allow God to live in our hearts, then a lot of things happen to us. And one important thing is that he puts his Holy Spirit into our very being. The Holy Spirit is very powerful. It's the Spirit of the living God. And when we sing that song, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. We need to be very careful what we're asking for. So we need to be prepared to abdicate our independence 
and to put our lives on the line under God's sovereignty and direction. Do you know that you can be directed from day to day by the Holy Spirit of God? A lot of people don't know this is possible, but it is, and it is what God wants for us. And one day, we shall know a lot of the reasons for the things we've been asked to do and said to ourselves, what on earth does God want me to do that for? Well, be careful about saying that because that is a, a little bit of unbelief. In fact, it's a lot of unbelief. And you see um, things like that going wrong in Scripture. So, just to wind up this time together, I wonder if you would like to join me in the closing prayer. God our Father, we thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your Son, our Lord Jesus, to live in this world and show your nature to those around him. Not only your nature, but your power and your love. And Lord, we want to surrender our lives more fully to you today so that you may be the sovereign and the only sovereign King of kings and Lord of lords in our lives. We ask it for the name of Jesus' sake. Amen. Now, if there's anyone who wants um, to talk about this, I would be very happy uh, to chat to you after the service.